Hello everyone. Let's solve some more questions on moles. The first question says the aluminium sulfate can be obtained as shown in the equation. Okay. How many moles of sulfuric acid are needed to produce 0.5 moles of aluminium sulfates? So we want to find the moles of sulfuric acid that we need to make uh, 0.5 moles of this. So you see the, the mole ratio between aluminium sulfate and sulfuric acid they are 1 ratio 3. So if it is 0 0.5, that would be 3 times of that. So it would be 1.5. C is answer. The equation for the burning of hydrogen in oxygen is shown below. Which information does this equation gives out about the reaction? 36 grams of steam can be obtained from 16 grams of oxygen. According to this equation, you see uh, 2 moles of hydrogen. That would make it 4 grams of hydrogen plus oxygen it will be 32 grams 16 times 2 and it would make 2 times water water is 18 so 2 times 18 is 36 so these are the masses 4 grams hydrogen can react with 32 grams of oxygen to make 36 grams of water so option a is wrong 2 grams of hydrogen combined with 1 grams of hydrogen that is also wrong because 2 grams uh, will require 16 grams of oxygen as 4 grams required 32 grams 2 grams will require 16 grams of oxygen so 1 gram is wrong 2 moles of steam can be obtained from 1 mole of oxygen you see according to the equation 2 moles require 1 mole of oxygen so that is the correct answer so next question we got this diagram and uh, the diagram shows the apparatus for measuring the volume of hydrogen given off when an excess of dilute HCl is added to powder metal. We are reacting a metallic powder with dilute hydrochloric acid and we are collecting this gas over here. Now, the experiment was carried out three times using the same mass. Okay, we got the same mass of powder each time but different powders. Okay, pure magnesium, pure zinc, a mixture of magnesium and zinc. Which powder gives the greatest volume of hydrogen and which is the least volume? Okay, now we got magnesium. The, the atomic mass of magnesium is 24 and that of zinc is 65. So it means one mole of magnesium will be 24 grams and one mole of zinc will be 65 grams. And since we are having same mass of the powders, so having same mass, for example, we can have like 100 grams of magnesium, 100 grams of zinc. If you got same mass, we will have more moles of magnesium and more moles means you'll get more gas. So greatest volume should be produced from magnesium. Okay. And uh, we got the third option is magnesium and zinc. In this mixture, we also got magnesium. That is the lighter one. But pure zinc is a heavier element with a greater atomic mass will have the least moles. So the least volume should be produced with zinc. So answer is A. Next question. The equation for the reaction between calcium carbonate and HCl is shown. This one. How many moles of calcium carbonate will give 24 cm cube of carbon dioxide? Okay. 24 cm cube of carbon dioxide and you want to find the moles of calcium carbonate. So first of all, we have to convert this volume into moles because equation gives you the mole ratio. So let's convert 24 cm cube it would be divided with 24,000 to make it into moles. So it would be uh, 0 0.001. These are the moles of uh, carbon dioxide. So according to the equation, one mole of carbon dioxide, it requires one mole of calcium carbonate. So answer is D for this question. One dm cube of ammonia gas is passed over heated copper oxide. What is the volume of nitrogen formed? Okay, so we got one dm cube of ammonia and uh, what volume of nitrogen when you have when you have got gases you can directly find the volumes like if it is uh, 2 dm cube then it would be 1 dm cube of nitrogen that will be produced so since we got 1 dm cube we will get half dm cube of nitrogen gas produced so it would be 0 0.5 moles in the next question two reactions used in the manufacture of nitric acid are shown what is the maximum number of moles of nitric acid which could be formed from one mole of nitrogen monoxide? One mole. Okay. 
So right now we got two moles, we'll give you two moles. So if it is one mole, we will get one mole of this according to this equation. Okay, so one mole of NO2 we have formed. Now let's see, in the next equation, we have already produced one mole in the equation number one. So if you got four, one mole of this, according to the equation, four moles will produce four moles of this. That means one mole of NO2, it will produce one mole of nitric acid. So simple ratio, its answer is B. Next, sodium hydrogen carbonate decompose on heating. In an experiment, five moles of sample of sodium hydrogen carbonate is heated. Which volume of carbon dioxide is evolved? So we got five moles of this one. That will give off how many moles of carbon dioxide? That is the half of that. That will be 2.5 moles. And we want to find the volume. And uh, you know, one mole, one mole of any gas occupies 24 dm cube at RTP. So what about 2.5 dm cube? That is x. You can multiply 2.5 with 24 to get your answer. So the answer is 60 dm cube. Okay, next question. We got calcium and water. What is the total mass of the solution that remains when 40 grams of calcium react with 100 grams of water? Okay, so we have to find what is the mass remaining. In this equation, how mass is changing? If you look at this equation, we got solid calcium, liquid water and aqueous calcium hydroxide. Well, we got hydrogen gas. So this gas, it is actually going out of the container. It is releasing out. Due to this releasing effect of this gas, uh, the mass will decrease. The mass will decrease. Now, how much mass will decrease? That we have to find. And that will give you the total mass of the solution remaining. Initially, we got 40 plus 100. We got 140 grams at start. So we have to find what mass of hydrogen is produced and that has released out. So if you see 40 grams of calcium, calcium, atomic mass of calcium is 40. So we'll, we got one mole of calcium while water is 18. So 100 over 18, that will give you 5.5 moles. Now, according to the equation, one mole of calcium require two moles of water. So it means water is in excess. That means we don't need to use water in the calculation. Calcium is the limiting reactant. And according to the equation, one mole of calcium will give you one mole of hydrogen. Okay. And what about one mole of hydrogen? If you got one mole of hydrogen, that will be uh, multiplied by two of its molecular mass and that will give you two grams. That means two grams hydrogen that will escape out. And from this total, we got 140 and two grams is lost out. So we get 138 grams is the mass that will remain at the end. So next one, what is the mass of magnesium which will completely react with this solution? So first of all, we have to construct the equation for this reaction that is Mg plus H2SO4 and that will give you MgSO4 plus H2. We got this solution. We have to find the moles from these values. This is the volume and this is the concentration and uh, moles is equal to C into V and volume is in cm cube divided with 1000 as well. So we will get the moles of sulfuric acid that will be 0 0.25 moles. So if you got 0 0.25 moles of this, we will have the same moles, 0 0.25 for mg. And uh, mg, atomic mass of mg is 24. So 0 0.25 uh, times 24, that will give us 6 grams. Which statement about substance formed when a given mass of an element burns in excess of oxygen is always correct? So we got the given mass of an element and when you burn it in oxygen which statement is always correct the substance formed is denser than the element it's not necessarily because sometimes we get a solid and a solid substance solid element it can produce a gas so the the element uh, needs not to be denser it can be lighter denser no problem greater mass than the element that yes, that is fine because when we combine an element with oxygen, the mass of the compound of the substance formed, it will always be more than the mass of the element because the oxygen it would have attached with that. So answer is B. Soluble in water? Not necessarily. White in color, we may get different colored compounds as well. 
all ammonium salts on heating with sodium hydroxide produce ammonia from which ammonium salt can the greatest mass of ammonia be obtained fine so uh, actually ammonia gas produced depends upon the ammonium ions you can see in the first ammonium phosphate we got three ammonium ions and in the self ammonium sulfate we got two ammonium ions and got one one each now uh, we got 0.5 moles of this ammonium phosphate so it'll just times three make it times three to get the moles of ammonia so it would produce 1.5 moles uh, it would produce one mole and the others they also produce one mole so greatest mass will be produced with the a next question we got these two equations what is the maximum mass of fertilizer that can be made if only 17 tons of ammonia is available fine now we got 17 tons of ammonia since we got the mass of ammonia in tons and we have the final answer also in tons so there is no need to convert into to grams we can directly con use the this value and uh, find the moles and solve this mcq uh, ammonia molecular mass is 17 so if you divide it with 17 we got one mole that's not actually the one mole i'm just uh, doing it regarding this question because the mass of ammonia is given in tons and the answer is also needed in tons so that's why we are using a simple straightforward method now one mole give you uh, one mole of nitric acid and uh, from the second equation if you got one mole of nitric acid you will get one mole of this now we can multiply this one with the molecular mass of this so which is 80 so we got 80 tons of ammonium nitrate hydrogen react with oxygen as shown in the equation below uh, how much gas will remain remain if two dm cube of hydrogen are reacted with one dm cube of oxygen according to this equation two moles require one mole that means two dm cube will require one dm cube to react that means no gas will remain so zero dm cube of gas will remain because the water produced is a liquid so there will be no gas whatsoever remaining sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide can react together to form potassium hydrogen sulfate and water only which amounts of reactants are required uh, equal masses of sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide look uh, we got potassium hydroxide plus sulfuric acid and that will give us uh, khso4 plus h2o uh, now the molecular mass of sulfuric acid is 98 and that of uh, koh it would be 39 40 and 56 so they're not required in the equal mass because we need 56 grams of koh to react with 98 grams of sulfuric acid equal mass is not needed equal number of moles of sulfuric acid and potassium hydroxide yes that's fine because we need one mole of sulfuric acid to react with one mole of potassium hydroxide that is fine C option is wrong because one mole they're saying require two moles that is wrong and two moles require one mole that is also wrong next one the compound P is the only substance formed when two volumes of ammonia gas react with one volume of carbon dioxide what is the formula of P okay so we have got uh, uh, two volumes of ammonia that means two NH3 and uh, react with one volume of carbon dioxide plus CO2 now how many nitrogens we got Two nitrogens okay so two nitrogens they are definitely they are over here as well they are they are present in all of these actually now six hydrogens we have six hydrogens uh, in the first option we got two and four six hydrogens here we got four hydrogens here we got four plus four eight hydrogens here we got eight hydrogens that means the answer is a next question uh, when reacted with an excess of dilute hydrochloric acid 0.002 moles of metal m liberated liberated means produced you can say 48 cm cube of hydrogen which equation is correct so we got hydrogen gas first of all so if you look at these equations uh, we can eliminate two equations straightforward without doing any calculation because hydrogen is produced only as h2 it's not produced as h so that's why these two options b and d they are wrong now we have to see the other two options we have to find the mole ratios let's see the moles of m is given and we have to find the moles of hydrogen uh, it's 48 cm cube divided it with 24000 so we get 0 
so it means it's 1 ratio 1 in the first equation in A we got 2 moles of metal M producing 1 mole of hydrogen but in equation C we got 1 mole of metal giving 1 mole of hydrogen so it means C is the correct answer next one nitrogen monoxide react with this what is the maximum volume of nitrogen that could be obtained when 1 dm cube of nitrogen monoxide it's, it's fine very easy we got uh, 1 mole of this and uh, we get 1 mole of this simple let's see the next one uh, 25 grams of hydrated copper sulfate crystals are heated to produce anhydrous copper to sulfate and water what is the mass of anhydrous copper sulfate formed so we got 25 grams of this and we want to find the mass of this okay now let's find the moles and uh, the moles of uh, CuSO4.5H2O it would be divided by its molecular mass and that will be 250 so we get 0 0.1 moles of this that will give you 0 0.1 moles and 0 0.1 moles of copper sulfate it would be uh, 16 grams 3 dm cube of sulfur dioxide reacted with 2 dm cube of oxygen uh, which volume of sulfur trioxide is formed fine so we want to find the volume of this we got 3 dm cube reacting with 2 dm cube according to this equation 2 moles require 1 mole that means 3 moles of SO2 will require 1.5 moles of oxygen which means oxygen is in excess so if oxygen is in excess we don't need to see sulfur dioxide is limiting reactant so we'll use sulfur dioxide to find the volume of SO3 so 2 moles produce 2 moles okay so 3 will produce 3 so B will be the answer next question hydrogen sulfide burns in an excess of oxygen according to the equation 48 dm cube of hydrogen sulfide is burnt which volume of sulfur dioxide will be formed at room temperature and pressure so we got gas and gas so it's hydrogen sulfide is 2 moles and that of uh, sulfur dioxide is also 2 moles is 2 ratio 2 that means 48 dm cube should give you 48 dm cube straightforward next question a chicken egg has a mass of 60 grams the egg shell is 10 percent of the total mass that means the egg shell is what it is 6 grams because 10 percent of the total mass so we got egg shell 6 grams the egg shell is made up of calcium carbonate what is the mass of calcium in the eggshell okay so we want to find the mass of only calcium calcium is calcium carbonate is CaCO3 if you find the molecular mass of this or the formula mass you can say that would be 100 okay and out of 100 we get 40 grams of calcium so 100 grams will have 40 grams of calcium so what about 6 grams we can do this so 6 grams will have X you can cross multiply it and it would be uh, 240 over 100 that would be 2.4 grams next question a mixture of 5 cm cube of CH4 and 100 cm cube of air is exploded assume air is 80% nitrogen volume and 20% oxygen volume the resulting mixture is cooled all volumes are measured at room temperature and pressure what is the composition of resulting gas okay so we got 5 cm cube of CH4 so 5 cm cube of CH4 will require what volume of oxygen that will be 10 cm cube and uh, we will get what we will get 5 cm cube of carbon dioxide and uh, steam we have converted the steam to liquid according to this equation that means we will not get any steam so according to this uh, data 5 cm cube of carbon dioxide that is fine uh, 10 cm cube oxygen here we got 10 cm cube of oxygen and uh, nitrogen will remain as it is and there will be no steam because water is in the liquid state so answer is B for this question so these were some questions from the mole concept we will solve some mole question on moles in the next video till then goodbye